On today's show, Sharon's dreams attempt to heal her birth and tell her she's an angel. Jenny discovers a very unique gift that she has. And then finally, Sue is told, don't worry about starting on your spiritual path late in life. Everything is still good. Your gifts are intact. Welcome to the Dream Interpretation Podcast with Michael and Sandy. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm excited to be here. This is another half hour of us eavesdropping on the very personal communication between the spirit world and you on your earth journey. That's why we focus on dreams. They are the message from the spirit world to you. So if you want to know what you're meant to be doing in your life right now at this very moment, then look no further than your dreams. To get your dream analyzed on our show, go to dream-analysis.com forward slash podcast. Fill in the form and submit your dream to the show or simply email radio show at dream analysis.com. That's all you have to do. Sandy, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Hey, I'm ready to dive into more dreams. Once again, if you want to see what we've got going on, because there's all kinds of stuff that's going to be happening in the near future, including a summit that we're going to plan for May, uh, go out to our website. Michael, you want to give the address and maybe say a little bit about some upcoming workshops? <laughs> well, dream-analysis.com is the website. Uh, if you want to get on our list and get notified about anything that we're doing, and we do things all the time, lots of free stuff all the time, lots of events, webinars, three-day events are our big thing. Um, dream-analysis.com, that will take you there. But download the dictionary when you get to the website. That's a dictionary that is, has thousands of symbols based on dreams that I've analyzed for people over the years. Um, very, very authentic analysis and interpretation of those symbols. And people say all the time, when they got a hold of that, they threw out all their other dream books. That's what you're going to do too. So, Sandy, let's start off. Have we got some dreams? Yes, we do. And I like the fact that these are going to be some short little, you know, punchy dreams. All righty, this first dream is from Sharon, and it's titled Shannon's Trees. Shannon takes me into her little studio, and she has two full-size Christmas trees. Maybe there's three fully decorated. Then her mom hands me a plate of some food, and I sit down at the table to eat. And I'm looking around thinking, how is it she has this sweet little cottage fully set up as just an extra space, fully furnished, when she's acting like she has so little to live on? I feel somehow misled. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So this dream attempts to heal her birth with the fully decorated and beautiful Christmas trees. Because Christmas is a symbol for birth. Well, it's Jesus's birth. But you're everything in a dream, so it's about your birth and healing for your birth. But it also says you're special, which is really cool, because Jesus was special, that you have gifts, you have abilities, like he did, etc. It says all of those things, but they're all fully decorated, so somebody is celebrating your birth, your arrival. And we know it's healing from mom as well, for mom really, because it's emphasized because a mother in the dream gives you a plate of food. And being served a plate of food in a dream is another healing symbol. So you have the ability to heal, do hands-on healing, channel energy through your body, out your hands, into your clients. Um, I asked Sharon if she felt misled by mom and how does it show up in reality? And she said, mom had a creative lifestyle that she groomed me for. And she always feels that she was misguided by her mom uh, instead of being allowed to bloom into who she was, she ended up living the lifestyle that her mom wanted her to live. That's the dream. Wow, no, I'm not done. So what is the little studio? So everything is set up in this location. It's all there. So it's saying to the dreamer, look, you came into life with everything fully in place. Even though you feel like you didn't, it is still all there. And so that feeling in the dream, like, hey, she has everything, and yet she says that she doesn't have anything to live on. It's This is what you got to look at for yourself. You have everything you need. Even though it doesn't feel like it, when you get into alignment and, and heal these issues that you're working on with mom, you're going to see this. Excellent. Okay. That was good. We have another dream from Sharon. 
and it's titled Garden Party. Bobby and I are sitting outside in a sunny rose garden, and there's people seated, and they're listening to music on the other side of the hedge. I'm showing a tall blonde woman how the amaryllis flowers are these big angel trumpet flowers and that they are all starting to bloom. I'm pointing at all three of them saying, it's beautiful and lovely in springtime. I am very excited and hopeful. That's exciting. I like that dream, Michael. I like this dream too, Sandy. <laughs> Again, it's celebrating birth because it's a garden party, and any party in a dream is going to be about birth, and this is a celebration. So, same scene, and then we said from the last dream, because she was served food, that she's a healer, and here she points out it's a sunny rose garden. So, we know she has a hands-on healing ability because the sun is another symbol for that very same gift. And because it's a rose garden, though, it's healing for the love that you didn't get, because flowers are all about love. We give flowers to the people we love. Then I loved the other part. I said channeling because of the two trees. And in this dream, we have listening to music from the other side of the hedge. So music in dreams represents a channeling ability or hearing spirits. And so listening to music from the other side is, is I can hear messages from the other side. We just leave out of the hedge. That's just trying to throw in there for us to remember it but she can channel and hear angels. And that's really emphasized too by the big angel trumpet flowers that we see in the dream. When I channeled on this, I was told that she channels three angels. And the beautiful thing is one of the angels that she channels is herself. What do you make of that, Sandy? Wow, that is pretty special. So is that her higher self that you're channeling there? Yes. That she's channeling? She's already an angel. She's at that level herself. So that's really cool. Um, which really is going to emphasize the spiritual leadership ability that she has and so on and so on and so on. Wow, that's beautiful. Let's talk about the tall blonde woman. The tall blonde woman, blonde, it, typically guides and dreams show up as blonde. Guides are above will show up as blonde. Blonde representing purity of thought. It would actually make me channel on in the dream and go, what level is this person at? Uh, is she already a guide or above herself? And some people ask me, why is that important? Um, it's important because... Often when you figure out what you do on the other side, you can see why you're here to do what you're here to do. And it makes a lot of sense. And, and then even understanding, hey, you're already an angel. Then it's like, okay, well, well, if I'm an angel, I shouldn't have a fear of this. I shouldn't have a whatever. I, I, I should block anything that causes me to doubt myself. I should go, I shouldn't have any doubts um, because I am, I'm actually at that level rather than I kind of think I'm at that level or maybe I... I feel like imposter syndrome. I'm not really, but I think I am. When the dream tells you you are and you know you are, it's great. It lets you say, okay, I'm just going to go for it. At least that's how I would take it. Well, oh, and does the flower, amaryllis, does that mean anything? Besides the fact they're beautiful? I don't know anything about those flowers. See, I'm a man. I just go into a <laughs> store and I say, I think my wife would like some flowers. Well, an amaryllis flower looks a lot like the trumpet flowers. It has big leaves they're really beautiful and some people are gifted to really get them to grow others are not as lucky <laughs> <laughs> there will be something Anyways. in that there will be something in the trumpet like maybe she can hear her guides that's one of her abilities is to hear them because you're definitely going to hear a trumpet interesting all righty well that was a fabulous dream for her let's move on to the next this one is titled flow and it's from jenny i am seeing a girl I somehow know I am her, only she is a lot more chubby than I am and wearing black rubber tights I would never wear. <laughs> also, she's wearing round glasses. I know she is sorting out something and it's working. I can feel the flow. I see the threads aligning in front of her. She is playing them like the strings of a harp. Wow, that's cool. It's very cool. Um I love the end of it, but what is the first part about? I protect myself out of fear. Now she's, you're everything in a dream. So she's looking at this person and then realize but the, that she is also that person at the same time. So she's getting a good look at herself. So I protect myself out of fear. The fear is given by the color black, um, by the fact that the woman is chubby. Uh, and this causes problems with her intestines. She has digestive system issues. Um, we know that because of the rubber tights that she mentions. 
Then she says the girl's wearing round glasses, so we know she's clairvoyant. She gets images, she can channel, and um, it comes to her as images that she has to interpret it. And then she says, I I see she's sorting out something and it's working. So that's really, really good. And she can feel the flow. So this means that she's able to feel the flow in her life and other people's lives. Now, right now, it might feel a little bit alien to her, but this is what's coming for sure. She sees people differently. She can see the threads of their future. Now, if we look at so many dreams that we work on here, they're always looking at the past and saying, here's where the problem comes from. And this is what you need to do. And this is definitely where we help people. We specialize in that. But occasionally, dreams will focus on the future and say, here's what you need to do. Here's a gift you have you need to develop. And here's how you have to develop it. Set up a group of five people and do this sort of thing with them. And then that's going to be springboard you to the next thing which you're going to get shortly. This is what she does. She looks at the future because she sees threads aligning in front of her, of this other woman that she's looking at. So she can see the threads of a person's future and then she can see how that future comes into being. So ultimately she helps people get into alignment, uh, which is lovely. I love this, that part of the dream. I love seeing gifts and dreams. I think it's probably my favorite aspect of dream interpretation. Wow. And then she plays them like strings of a harp. Yeah. Is that well, it's, how she's getting them in alignment or it's, what does that mean? It's to do with channeling because playing music in a dream is about channeling. Like we had it in the last dream, hearing the music over the hedge. So it's going to be similar to that. Um, but because she's playing the strings, it's like she helps the person get into alignment because you can only imagine it's harmonious, beautiful music with a harp. Right. And so it's like she helps people get in harmony with what their future is by channeling for them. Wow, that is really beautiful. What an interesting gift. Absolutely. All righty. This one is from Joanne and it's titled A Lively Dog and Visiting a School. I was walking along a road. There was a woman walking her dog. It was very lively bounding along. It stopped to go to the toilet outside a house. The woman thought she recognized me and asked if I delivered newspapers in another country. I said, no, it wasn't me. Next, I needed to collect my school uniform. I've been visiting a school or was at a school, but temporarily I was wearing a very smart, well-fitted top and skirt. And I thought the headmistress wouldn't mind if I wore that instead of the school uniform. I had some French homework I needed to do. I wanted to get home. It was a long journey. <laughs> I, I like this dream. It's kind of short and punchy, all right. Uh, the woman walking her dog. So this is about uh, intimacy or, or having a connection with your own animal nature. And the dog stops to go to the toilet outside somebody's house. So this is about eliminating something to do with how I hold myself back. Um, then the woman, this other woman, thought she recognized her and asked if she delivered papers in another country. So this is like, aren't you the lady that helped people discover the major issues that they needed to work on or look at in their lives? And in another country is going to be in a former lifetime. Um, so if you ever dream that you're in a, in a, country you've never been to uh, or a time you've you have no you know that is in the past then it's about a past life so she did this now in all always the gifts that we're going to use in a particular lifetime in this lifetime are gifts we already used before we're not going to say hey i'm going to come down here and i'm going to learn this completely new thing and then you 500 people can all be super dependent on me learning that and getting good at it. It's not how it works. <laughs> we pick things that we're good at, or we're, we're told to pick things that we're good at, and then we use them to help other people. And they will do the same for us. It's a it's a two-way street. You get helped by somebody, they get helped by you. Um, or it might be, you know, indirectly, but it all it's how it is. So she's asking, do you recognize this gift within yourself? And she goes, no, I, I don't recognize it at this moment in time. That's what her saying, it wasn't me. And saying it to a woman, we know the issues are with mom uh, because she's talking to a woman, but this also works through feminine energy, that counseling skill. Now, it's a counseling skill, all right, to say, I know what your issues are. This is what you need to do. But I'm not going to get my hands dirty helping you. I'm just going to point out to you the major things you need to do. So it's like a counseling skill, but kept uh, 
a little bit at a distance. I stay, remain aloof. I just help tell you what to do and then you have to do it. And then she goes, I need to collect a school uniform. So schools and dreams are also make things about spiritual gifts or gifts or higher aspects. And she's instead, she is wearing a well-fitting top and skirt. So she's looking very feminine, but not wearing the uniform that all the other girls in the school are going to have to wear. So this dream is encouraging her to step out and be herself uh, and display her femininity rather than blending in with everybody else. And this is exactly what she's working on. She was really happy to see this bit in the dream. And even the part where she says, I thought the headmistress wouldn't mind if I wore that instead of the uniform. So it's like, it's, this isn't even going to be a problem. Now, you know, it would be a problem. You'd be sent home. But in the dream, it's great for her to have this. Um, then she says she had some French homework that she needed to do. That kind of ties in with the dog. Um, France in dreams. Now, if it's different if you're from there or you've lived there and been there. And uh, if that's the case, then it's going to be about that, how you felt when you were there. And France is about sexual liberation, about being yourself and being comfortable being yourself. Like you're not held back in any way by anybody else. And so this is something that she uh, is being told to work on. And indeed, we know she is and doing well because of the fact that she's dressed differently from all the other uh, women who are going to the school. And then what about the long journey home? That's karma. A long journey is a karmic journey. It's like, the, why is this taking as long as it takes? They're like, there's a slog in what I have to do. And she feels this. So she doesn't feel like she's had an easy journey. Wow. Very interesting. Oh, I like the dream. All righty. Let's start our next dream. I like this. It's from Sue and it's called Changing the Flight. I was at Michael's and Sandy's outside. Woohoo. Yes, I love it. I never get called out in a dream, so that's pretty cool. Sandy was telling us how someone important thought we were great. That sounds like me. <laughs> but we were the older ones in the class, and we didn't cheer like the younger kids. Then we were going to have lunch, and I had a flight. Eric, my deceased brother, was there, and he said he'd take me to lunch on the way to the airport. I was thinking we could eat there. And Michael said there was a place we could change or print out our boarding passes right there. I had luggage and a phone and another item of importance. And I left all of it in the room and was at the counter to change the flight to earlier. I was currently booked at 3 p.m. I could see the flight path of the plane and watched it move in real time. As I looked, I don't remember it being in my mind's eye. Not sure how I saw it, but it was from a higher perspective. Oh, that's kind of cool. Higher perspective. All right. So uh, at our house, Sandy was telling us how someone important thought we were great. Okay. So the dream is trying to pick the dreamer up. Like, hey, you're super important. Does she really believe it? Well, she doesn't cheer like the younger kids. And and I asked her about that. And she said, yeah, all the younger kids are like, yeah, we're great. And we're a bit older. So it's like, yeah, okay, I'm going to don't think they really mean me. Um, so anyway, she needs to accept that she is super, super important. Then we're going to have lunch and I had a flight. So the flights are good. This is a departure in my life. And her deceased brother is helping her as well from the other side. We've seen that in a number of her dreams. But then she said, I think we could just eat there. And then Michael said, there's a place we could change and print our boarding passes right there. So why are we seeing all this? It's like she has this idea that she started or come into her spiritual side late in life and that she needs to hurry up. She needs to move faster than she's currently moving. And in the dream, I'm saying to her, you don't need to worry. Everything you need will be there at the time you need it. Like you can print the boarding passes, which is really good. You don't usually see something like that in a dream. You can print them at the airport and we can eat right at the airport and you can change right at the airport. Like it's all of these things that you need to do are going to be there for you to do when you need to do them. It's really lovely. And then she had uh, luggage and phone, other items and left it all in a room. It's good. Leave these things behind. We don't want them in a dream. Um, and she wanted to change the flight to earlier. And this is a bit of the panic. I, we're booked for three, but I want to go earlier. So it's like I feel, and this comes from a past life or two past lives that this dreamer also had, where she was meant to get into the spiritual field, but she didn't. And there's a million reasons why people don't. It doesn't matter. 
Uh, but she has that sense of urgency now because she feels like I've messed up twice before and I really need to get moving because I nearly didn't do it in this lifetime either. But she doesn't need to do it. The three is really good. You don't need to go earlier. Just take it the way it is. And then the last part, I could see the flight path of the plane move in real time. She's at the counter and yet while she's looking at the tickets and boarding passes, she can see the path of the flight. And I had told her before that she is a very unique uh, type of spirit. She can hold her consciousness active in two planes at the same time. Most of us is just one. And so she operates in two planes. And one of her special abilities is to help people move their gifts from the spirit plane to the physical plane. But we see that in many of her dreams like this, like I can see something else on a higher plane because she's looking at a plane uh, while I'm on the physical plane. Um, Not really manifested, I suppose, in her waking life in any conscious way where she can go, I get it, I get it, I get it. But it's definitely coming because it's so consistently in her dreams. Wow, that was beautiful. And I got called out in a dream. I can't believe it. That is so cool. (laughs) And then the higher perspective, is that the whole part of her being able to see what you talked about? Yeah, she can see things from a higher perspective. It's a natural ability that she has. And she can see other people's purpose and gifts from a higher perspective. Wow, that's awesome. All righty. Uh, confused about my car. And this is from Sue as well. Got back from a trip, flew, and was in Ann Arbor. Went to college there and was walking to my SUV. I was walking. I asked the angels to make sure my car was still there. I saw it right in the front row of the parking lot and was walking towards it. There were these two guys that said the engine was right there in their garage area that it had slid down the hill and gotten broken. They pointed to the hill where it had slid down. I didn't think that was true because I could see my car. All right. So here, this is what I was saying from the last stream. She feels like I should have been further along on my path. So I'm asking my angels, please let my car, which is my ability to achieve my goals, but my ability to achieve my spiritual goals. I'm now aware spiritually Please let my gifts be still active, be still functional, be still whatever you want. And so she has this kind of fear that I've started off too late. Of course, that's not true. She hasn't, uh, but we see it in the dream. And that's why she's asking the angels, please let it be there. But it's there. It's right up front. So she doesn't even have to do anything to access it. It's just right there. But then her fears start kicking in. And we know it's about channeling because the two guys are there. And I think there's lots of twos throughout this dream. But the engine, which is the heart of the car, Um, they say has slid down the hill and gotten broken. That's her fear. It hasn't. And she said, even in the dream, I knew it. I could see the car and I should have just got in it and drove it and said, look, it's working. And in fact, I told her that's what she needs to do. But it keeps going on and on and on about like problem with the car. Um, And so she just feels like I've slid down the hill. It's like I've neglected this, Um, but it's not true. Wow. Okay. And then I was taking pictures of the engine in the garage on my phone to show my brother Scott and my dad. Both are mechanics. The engine was in two parts. They showed me a couple of rods that were sheared off, but I didn't really believe them. I didn't think it could be like that. So I like this. Her dad and brother are mechanics. So it's like, even in the dream, I don't believe this is true. I don't think it can be broken. I do think my car still works. I do think I can still achieve what I need to achieve. But she's she has this inner conflict. And that's what's going on in the dream. Is that the couple of rods that are sheared off and she didn't really believe them? Yeah, so it's like all these twos are about my channeling is broken. Um, uh. And the engine was split in two parts. Uh, and there's two guys. So we know it's all about channeling. We know that for her anyway, because she is channeling. Uh, But it's kind of like, I don't believe it. I think it's broken, but I I really don't think it's broken. You know, again, her inner conflict and the rods would be a masculine symbol. So masculine and feminine. uh, But it's when we see a masculine part that's calling the issue out. uh, It's like it's in my head. I'm thinking this, but it's not really true. Oh, very good. Then I was getting ready to go and was making sure I had my keys. I saw a bunch of keys on the counter. They were all green. They weren't mine. Mine were in my back pocket. 
Then I was worried I didn't have my phone and was trying to figure out how I could tell Verizon to shut it down and for me to get a new phone. But I had just taken pictures with it. So <laughs> then I asked if there was a car rental I could get. The guy says, yes, he noticed the strap on my black purse was frayed and said his wife had hers made into a short handle on her purse. And that worked out well for her. I mentioned I'd think about it. Then I was thinking about renting a car for two days because it, it, it had given me time to get my car, either a new one or borrow one. All right. So again, we have the twos because... I'm going, to rent, I'm going to rent another car for two days, et cetera, et cetera. So we know what it's about. But the renting a car is like, I'm going to copy somebody else. So I think my connection is broken. So I'm going to copy somebody else's connection. Now, when you're learning your gift or trying to get better at it, absolutely copy somebody else. Follow the style. Don't break the rules and don't try. Go, I know better. But when you get good at it, then you can say, okay, what is what is my gift really about? How does mine take shape and, and work and so on? That's when to do it. So it's not good to see her renting a car because she's afraid that her gift is gone or she's let it slide and what that is all about. And even the phone is about channeling because it's like, oh, I need to call. I'm using my phone. It's working. But I need to call Verizon on my phone to get it shut down because, and even in the dream, she's like, wait a second, I just took pictures with this phone. I know the phone's working. So it's all this inner conflict. And, um, and then at the end, it's like, okay, all of this, will allow me either get a new car or borrow one. And she said, like, right at the end of the dream, she still felt, I should just get in the car. It's right there and it's ready to go. And I should just start it. And then just shout, hey, look, it's working great. And drive off, which is all she needs to do. <laughs> and and that's all. And that, in reality, that means for her to go do channeling? Is that what she She already can channel. She can oh. already channel. She's just questioning her abilities, but she's already a very good channel. Ah, and then the strap on her black purse was frayed. And the guy said, oh, we can make it into a shorter handle. And she says, I'll think about it. What is that all about? That's about getting a, getting a handle on her fears. So it's going to be a shorter strap. Uh, the other strap would be over the shoulder. So it's like, this is a burden. I feel like a burden that her not trusting it and doubting is a burden. But if she cuts it and gets it made into it, then it's like, I've got a handle on my fears and I can go forward. Oh, that's brilliant. That was really a good symbol. All righty. We're definitely out of time now. Well, thank you, Michael. This was fabulous. I really enjoyed these dreams. I hope everybody does too. And I hope you guys all have a super good week. See you Bye. next week. Bye.